everybody. Video here for you today. I'm starting this on Tuesday. I'm not sure what day I'm going to upload this. I'm starting on one from Egypt, one from ancient America. I just up uploaded one from Scotland. But today we are going to talk a little ancient America. I covered the ancient United States in April pretty thoroughly. Today we are going to go down to Alaska. I have mentioned Alaska in an ancient history news video. Well, today's a little different. Now, I marked that site right here called Mesa, just a general mile marker. I know it's 100 miles north, northwest of a certain region down here. So I know it's in this general area. And the Butte, I think, or the Mesa that this site is located on, I have a feeling it's right down here. This one right here, I could be wrong. It's not really vital exactly where it is, but it's right here somewhere in the Brooks Range. And people use this well back into the Younger Dryas and beyond for hunting. Lookout type place. I think it's right down here. I know there's a stream running by it. I know there's another butte nearby. That'll give you an idea. Looking up at the mountains, the Brooks Range here, a bunch of streams. Probably was awesome hunting back a long time ago. Here's a website from the BLM. I'll just read a little. Here's a look at that butte. Very pyramidal mountain there in the background. It says the Mesa site. When did the first people come to the Western Hemisphere and who were they? BLM scientists in Northern Alaska are at the cutting edge of new theories about the first Americans. The emerging picture from their research heightens the complexity surrounding one of the most enduring anthropological questions of our time. It says for much of the 20th century, scientists have scoured Remote parts of Alaska for clues to North America's first inhabitants, Paleo-Indians. In 1978, when BLM archaeologists were surveying public lands north of the Arctic Circle, prior to oil exploration, they discovered several stone projectile points that had probably been mounted on lance-like spears. Initial radiocarbon dating indicated that the points were around 7,600 years old. Not even close to the oldest artifacts found in the New World. But by the late 1980s, the more precise dating method had been perfected. Accelerator mass spectrometry, that showed that some of the artifacts at the Mesa site date from around 12,000 years old. The findings stunned archaeologists and the Department of Interior subsequently funded a five-year research project that concluded in 1997. Here's an article from seven years ago, Climate Change and the People of the Mesa. Here's a look at the Mesa and the surrounding area. It says Alaska was once a setting for an environmental shift. So dramatic, it forced people to evacuate the entire North Slope, according to Michael Kuntz, an archaeologist with the Bureau of Land Management. It says about 12,000 years ago, as the North Slope evolved to what it looks like today, bison disappeared. The last evidence of the Mesa Paleo Indians comes from around the same time. Kuhn sinks the extinction of the bison from the North Slope, along with the simultaneous scarcity of caribou, caused the Mesa people to move or die out. Or maybe it was one swift blow that caused the melting of the ice caps, the megafauna to die, and these people to disappear. Says this is totally the effect of the environment, Kuhn says. Not only did it run the Paleo Indians out of here, it made the place unlivable for anyone for 1,500 years. By examining bones and stone tools, archaeologists found that people moved back to the North Slope. About the same time, caribou returned after what seems like a population crash that lasted more than 3,000 years, right? The Younger Dryas period. Well, here is a PDF I found. This was excellent. A lot of good info. I cannot cover nearly all of it, but I'll go over some of the finer points here. Here is a mammoth, an American lion, a late Ice Age scene from the Brooks Range. The artist depicts here. Here was one of the areas around the Mesa site they were excavating, work that wrapped up about 23 years ago. Now, just reading different websites, it was clear people were getting radiocarbon years and calendar years confused but this website uh, clears it up. They know what they're talking about. It says, life at the Mesa. Without getting ourselves bogged down in further examination of the research data, the following sketch is how we think the people using the Mesa were conducting their daily lives 12,000 to 10,000 radiocarbon years ago. And in calendar years, that is 14,000 to 12,000 calendar years ago. And reading more precise dating, it's about 11,700 years ago that these people came to an end.
Here's excavation lake bed sediments at Lake of the Pleistocene nearby. Seems these people were taken out younger Dryas period like the Clovis, or they seem to disappear like the Clovis did. Here's a look at a winter camp here in 1910. Talks about how they think these people live kind of underground with a lot of sod and wood and pretty much a cover over their homes. It's pretty fascinating, people living in such a harsh area. They say that dogs were a major part of this encampment back in the Younger Dryas period because of the large lions and carnivores in the area. The dogs were kind of an alarm system for these villages going way back in time. I found this point in the PDF very interesting. Talks about beginnings, talks about Beringia, talks about the Nanana site and the Mesa site, both located on the map there. It says in Eastern Beringia, two distinct cultural, let me catch up, entities appear to be old or older than Clovis. The Nanana complex of interior Alaska and the Mesa complex of Arctic and Western Alaska these complexes are not cultural isolates like other proposed early entities. The stone tool assemblages of Nanana and Mesa are replicated in number sites that are chronologically consistent across a large geographic area. It says the Nanana complex is Siberian, while the Mesa complex is classic Paleo-Indian. So how did this happen? Why are there two different yet contemporaneous Pleistocene cultural complexes in Arctic Alaska, and why are there classic Paleo-Indians in Alaska more than 3,000 miles from the North American High Plains, the heart of Paleo-Indian activity? Well, that is a good question. It talks about the Clovis theory, and maybe they weren't the first ones. It says, given the current archeological data, it almost seems as though the Clovis culture spontaneously appeared in the High Plains and Southwest and then spread rapidly in the form of regional derivatives throughout the rest of the temperate North America. However, aside from a good science fiction read, the creation of a cultural complex through spontaneous generation is a difficult concept to grasp. While there have been a number of older than Clovis sites brought forward, few survived the scrutiny they received. Nonetheless, there are very few sites that may indeed be older than Clovis, such as Monteverde, Meadowcroft, a few others. At present, however, sites such as these appear to be one-of-a-kind occurrences, which produce an often meager artifact assemblage and are found nowhere else, and display no apparent technological relationship to Clovis. For those reasons alone, they seem unlikely candidates as a source for Clovis. Ultimately, the Clovis pregenerator must stem from an old world population, because that is where modern humans evolved. How and where that population arrived in the Western Hemisphere obviously determines the rest of the story. Here are some of the artifacts found at the site right here. Some big, some of them small, polluted bifaces, core fragments, microblade cores. And then it comes down here, it says another unique artifact found associated with the site's microblade component was this lithic artifact, round, flat with the hole in the middle. They call it the roller skate wheel. The artifact shows evidence of human alteration. It may have been brought to the site as a natural curiosity. Although we have no direct evidence for its use, we speculate that it could have served as a pendant or perhaps as an atoll weight. There is a pendant or something they really don't have any explanation for. Here's a dating graph here, the Mesa site dates, radiocarbon years, got to change those into years ago dates. Seems to fall within the Younger Dryas period here, in the yellow. These people seem to disappear at the end of the Younger Dryas. Here's a comprehensive chart. When the artifacts were found, laboratory sample number, location, conventional radiocarbon age. And remember, you gotta calibrate that up to figure out exactly how old those artifacts are. This research here was very comprehensive, some new dating techniques. This place was taken out at the end of the Younger Dryas period. Here are projectile points of the Clovis and Folsom, and some other very early projectile points there. There's a Mesa artifact down there, bottom left. Here's a hearth found at the site. They found 
15 hearse and a few other things below the surface here. Here are some more projectile points found at the site dating back over 11 and a half thousand years. Here's a comparison of artifacts from the Nanana site and the Mesa complex. The Nanana complex on the left associated with people in Siberia. Mesa complex associated with American Paleo Indians here up in the Arctic Circle. Here's a herd of caribou near Iteriak Creek adjacent to the Mesa. Big herd of them there. It says the people that moved into the area and occupied the area 7,500 years ago did not utilize Mesa complex site locales as hunting lookouts. Suggests that the need to do so was a condition that was particular to the Pleistocene-Holocene transition period. Here's another link I will leave below, but Michael Coons is the one who led the research here, but just kind of summing it up. It says the composition of the Mesa artifact assemblage and its obvious technological association with Paleo-Indian cultures of mid-continent North America mark it as noticeably different from other ancient Arctic cultures. The presence of the Mesa complex demonstrates a previously undocumented cultural diversity in eastern Beringia at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary. Here's the New York Times from about 20-some years ago. It documents these finds near here. It says clues to earliest Americans in 11,700-year-old campsite. So this news came out about 23 years ago. Just got to keep it alive. It's part of the big picture here. Here are some more artifacts. That one is very interesting. But I found this story perfect to go along with my Ancient America series and my Younger Dryas Cataclysm videos. People up here in the Arctic Circle, their artifacts resembled Paleo-Indian Americans from the Upper Plains. That's an interesting story in itself. There was people here that had, were associated with people from Siberia. Did they get stranded here when sea levels rose dramatically? Is that the explanation? Probably. It's a pretty interesting story. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very safe day.